Say, dog. Welcome back to Thug Notes. This week we working it with the Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. This book tells the story of two ranch hands, a skinny hood named George and some gumby looking mofo named Lenny, who be a bit goofy in the head, know what I mean? See, even though Lenny simple as love to pet soft animals, he too swole to handle them without busting them up. So as my boys rolling up to their new gig, George starts dropping some righteous talk about how once they stack enough dough, they're gonna buy their own farm and live the high life with no hassles. And Big Lenny even gonna have his own rabbits to tend to. At the ranch, George and Lenny peep some wrinkly old timer named Candy, who been working the farm since forever. Out of nowhere, the boss man's son Curly steps to and starts messing with Lenny for no reason. Also, turns out Curly just married some hoochie who like to bust it with the other farm hands. George tells Lenny he best stay away from that trick. When Lenny and George start jabbering again about their dreams of living like high ballers, Candy jumps in and say he can lend them some scratch and live with them on that farm. With the promise of Candy's cash money, they realize they only got one more month of hustling before they can start living high off the hog. Later, Curly's wife peeps Lenny chilling all by his lonesome and starts teasing my boy. After she asks him if he want to touch her hair, Lenny gets amped and starts stroking too rough. Just when she about to squawk, Lenny tweets out and accidentally snaps her neck. Woo! Man. Lenny gets all scared that George is going to be mad and bails. When Curly finds his bitty line stiff, he rallies his posse to hunt Lenny down. But before the lynch mob can ghost Lenny, George finds him chilling at a creek. Lenny asks George to talk about their dream crib again to calm him down. As George lulling Lenny with those sweet dreams of easy living, he pulls out a piece and puts a hot one right in Lenny's dome. Damn. Alright B, you just ain't grasping the title of this book without checking this poem by Robert Burns. The best laid schemes of mice and men, gang after glay, and leave us not but grief and pain for promised joy. Just like Bobby be doing in his poem, Steinbeck dropping some raw talk about how although the American dream promising a righteous life to everyone who got the juice to hustle, it ain't nothing but an illusion. See, up in this backward ass society, shysty rich folks stacking bread at the expense of the weak and poor who being robbed of their basic human dignity. So what Steinbeck preaching up in here is that dreams that exist in a culture of exploitation ain't never gonna be nothing but dreams. So are we supposed to be like them tight ass rich folk who only look out for themselves? Or should we help a brother out? If you keeping it allegorical up in here, you can say Steinbeck posing the same question that Cain asked God in the story of Cain and Abel. Am I my brother's keeper? So let's get all biblical up in this easy. In Genesis 4.12, God lays the hurt on Cain by saying, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Since Cain spilt that kindred blood, he ain't never gonna enjoy the fruits of his labor no matter how much he hustles. And since my boy's thugging it up in a world tainted by the curse of Cain, that farm Lenny and George always dreaming about ain't never gonna happen. Cause as my boy Steinbach suggesting by naming his character George Milton, paradise is lost, playboy. You can also say this book critiquing Judeo-Christian morality, player. See my boys Lenny and George repping two opposing aspects of humanity. Lenny be all the animal appetites that Peep's always trying to deny, which is why he always want to pet soft things. Whereas my boy George representing the voice of reason that try to control them beastly desires. That's why George always telling Lenny what to do. When George pumps a hot one in Lenny's skull, it's like he trying to destroy man's animal impulses. So to rep that Judeo-Christian morality, my boy got an ISIS day one brother, just like Cain. Yo, thanks for showing all the love. Keep it gangsta and tune in next week, Playboy.